So if you're like me, you have a whole bunch of Linux systems. And Linux systems in the modern day and age update all the time. And that's a good thing. We want regular bug fixes and security updates to come to us as frequently as possible. But this also means that all of my Linux systems, the bare metal ones, the Proxmox hosts, virtual machines, and LXC containers, they're all pulling updates from the internet on the regular. And since they all run Debian, they're basically pulling the same update 15 or 20 times over across my whole network. Now that's not really a problem in itself. I mean, the internet connection can handle 20 copies of the same dev file being downloaded. But I want to be a good steward of the open source Debian repositories, the good donors who donate their time to run these mirrors, and I'm going to run a cache for myself. So my Debian systems can pull from my local cache. My local cache only has to get each file from the internet once. So if you too have a whole bunch of Linux systems that all update things all the time, and you want to cache those updates locally, then come along on this adventure. So I just installed a brand new Debian container. And I ran apt update, and you can see it had to get quite a few files here. So connected to security and also deb, and it downloaded in release packages and a few other files. Then it tells me it has 65 packages that need to be upgraded. So I just created a brand new container from a template and I've already got 65 updates. So if you're creating new containers, new VMs regularly, you're probably running apt update, apt upgrade as the first thing you do. And then you're probably pulling in a few hundred megs of data from the internet, which again is not a lot, but we're trying to be nice to our open source Debian mirrors here. So anyway, what is this deb.debian.org? What does that look like? So Debian lets us just browse it here so we can see what's going on. And there's a folder here called Dists. And in the Dists folder, you can see all of the usual stuff. Bookworm, Bookworm backports, Bullseye, Buster. That matches this here, by the way. Bookworm updates, Bookworm. And if I go in Bookworm, you can see a file called inrelease. And inrelease has the hashes of a whole bunch of files in the repository. So essentially, when apt does an apt update, it's looking at each of the repositories you have in your sources file. It's browsing to the disks folder and finding that in-release file. Downloaded the in-release file, and the in-release file has the hashes of a whole bunch of other files in the repository. And from there, apt can know if anything has changed, and it should re-download those files because they're new. And then from there, it can see if there's any packages with new versions, download those packages. Now, aside from this in-release file and the packages that GZ file, essentially everything here is version named. So every time a new package is released, the deb file has the version in the file name. And that means that aside from the in-release file and the releases.gz file, we can cache these essentially forever because the contents of a given file name are never going to change. If they were to release updates, they would change the thing on the end, the version number, and it'd be a new file. So I've set up my cache to essentially cache a deb file of a given name for essentially infinite amount of time, but not cache the in-release file and those other index files. So every time we do an update, it'll just pull the new in-release from the internet. It won't cache that, but if there's any actual file updates, it'll cache all those. So for this project, I've decided to use Nginx, which is basically like the web server that runs the internet. I am aware there are more specialized packages like app cacher. I haven't seen any updates to those in a very long time, but of course it doesn't mean they don't work, but Nginx is an incredibly stable web server. It's the backbone of the internet these days. I'm pretty sure it surpassed Apache, which had already surpassed IIS and all those other things. So it's what I'm using. And of course, I have all the commands on my blog, which includes the installation commands, my nginx config file, and a few other things. So to start, I'm going to make a new container in Proxmox just to hold this. So call it like deb cache. I'm using the latest version of Debian. If you want to put your cache on a separate drive, you can add a new mount point at var deb cache. If you want to, it's optional. Don't need a lot of CPU. You don't need a lot of RAM. One gig is probably fine. We don't need IPv4. That's optional if you want to use it. I'm going to use IPv6 only. And let's go. So I'm going to go ahead and do a full update like we always do. Just apt update, apt upgrade. Let's go. And we're just going to install Nginx with Nginx. Yes. So now at this point, I faced a bit of a juncture. How am I going to get my Linux clients to talk to my cache instead of their default mirror? And so the options I have are I could override DNS on a network level, which means I have to put a bunch of DNS configuration for every repo I want to override onto my network. My second option is I could configure this as a proxy server. 
The downside to that is the proxy server won't cache anything over HTTPS. And so Debian repos are HTTP, but a lot of external repos for Debian are HTTPS. The third option is to rewrite sources.list on every system to point to my mirror. And I chose the third option, and I wrote a simple script that I store on the cache server. So every time I bring up a new system, I can just curl that script, run it, it'll rewrite the sources that list for me, point to my cache server. So now all of my requests to the cache server will be going over HTTP, that is insecure. The cache server will then do a backend that's either HTTP or HTTPS to the origin. Now one of the reasons I chose to use HTTP instead of HTTPS is because dev packages are already signed with GPG. So every dev repository has a signing key, Proxmox, Debian, etc. They have their signing keys that are published. Those come with the operating system, or if you install a third-party repo, those come with that. And they trust certain repositories based on their GPG key. So we can validate on the client side the authenticity of all of the data in the repo based on that signing key. We don't need to use TLS to secure the connection because all of the files can be verified. That of course means an attacker could sniff our traffic and see what packages we're using, but that package information is already public and we were already using HTTP anyway for Debian, so it's not less secure. So on my website I have the nginx config which goes here, so let's go and write this config out. So I'm going to cd over to etsy nginx and work from there. So in nginx we have a file called sites available, another one called sites enabled. And so you put all of your configs in sites available, then create a link to them in sites enabled when you want to enable them. So by default they have this default config that I'm going to remove, and then I'm going to create my own file in sites available called devconf. So sites available devcache.conf. I got the contents of it on my blog, you can just copy and paste that whole thing right in. And let's walk through it. So first off we have a pass to the cache. I decided to put it in var deb cache cache. So if you mount this var deb cache directory as a mount point, you can control where it gets stored. And we have a lot of space here. So I allowed up to a thousand gigs with a min of five gigs free. So this will basically just say the cache will use as much space as it can until it hits five gigs free and store stuff for an inordinate amount of time. I've also added a log line that includes the cache status, so we can look at the logs and see if it was a hit or a miss. So down here I have file names that don't get cached, so if it's a one, they're no cache. And so these three specific files are not going to get cached, they're going to get bypassed. So next in the server block, we configure the server itself. So I am listening on only IPv6, which is bracket colon colon. If you need to use legacy IP, you can uncomment this line, and comment this one out, or whatever you need to do. All of these settings here configure how long the cache stores things and things like that. And then down here I have a list of redirect locations. So I'm essentially using a subpath on the folder for each of these repositories. So Debian points to the Debian repository, DebSec is the Debian security repository, Ubuntu, Ubuntu security, Kali, Proxmox catches PVE and also backup server, Caddy, Node.js. If you want to add more repositories to this list, feel free to comment. I might add them to my file over time. If you're using other distributions that have other paths, you can of course add them to this file. Basically for the deb.palette.net, which is my local name I'm going to assign to the server, I'm going to have a slash path that's going to be the repository, and within that folder we'll find dists and bookware min release, etc. And at the very end, uh, we have static files. So I'm using the static folder to store my conversion scripts, and I just have a root with auto index there, and the nginx status if you want that. So we'll save that. We'll create a link to it. So now I should be able to start up Nginx. And what do you know? It is started. Also, just an FYI, you might have to use restart. So enable will tell the service to start on boot, but if you make any changes, make sure you restart afterward. So that'll make sure it rereads the configuration file. So I took the IP address of my Debian container here, and I put it in my local DNS on my network at deb.palmet.net. So whatever you're using for DNS internally, whether that's Edgard Home, OpenSense, something like that, I put it there so I can access it. And now I should be able to access my cache from a web browser. So I went to deb.palette.net, which is my local cache, slash Debian. And what do you know? I got redirected to Debian. So I can see here, disks, bookworm, in release. Nice. And here, if I want to look at accesses, I can go to var debcache. 
do tail dash f access.log. So you can see someone got the in release file and it was bypassed. So now that the cache is up and running, I need to replace all of the entries in sources.list to point to my new cache system instead. So I wrote a bash script to do that. Let's check that out. So again, scripts on my website. I may update it in the future. Basically, it goes in this location on the server that we can read it later. And here it is. So first off, I set the location of my mirror. This is on my local network. So local client should be able to resolve this. This could be an IP address. Next, I wrote a bash function that will rewrite one file. So we use sed and we tell it to replace http colon slash slash debian.org slash debian with mirror slash debian. So that means every time it sees this URL, it replaces it with this one. So do that for debian, FTP security, debian security, Ubuntu, Ubuntu security, Kali, Proxmox, Caddy server, and node source. Again, you could add your own to this list if you have other repositories you commonly use. So then down at the bottom, I rewrite sources.list. And then after that, I check to see if there's any files in sources.list.d, and I rewrite those too. Then also, I notice some Debian systems are using a different type of file called debian.sources. So if you have that file, then I'll replace it with a normal sources.list that has the normal mirror slash Debian, version code name, blah, blah, blah. So now let's put this file on our server so we can update our test system. So we're gonna make sure we have that static directory so we can put files in it. So I'm gonna edit this file, rewrite.sh, and paste in my contents. I'm gonna save that. So if I go back over here, I should be able to go to rewrite.sh and it should come up with my shell script. And it downloaded it. So now, anytime I set up a new Debian system, or really any Debian-based Linux system, because this takes care of Debian, Ubuntu, Kali, Proxmox VE, Proxmox Backup, um, those servers, if it's running something else, it at least won't touch it if there's other repositories there that it doesn't know about. So it's so a one-liner in the shell to just curl or w get that batch file and run it. So curl. So we're just going to curl that rewrite file into bash. Oh, they don't have curl. So we didn't have curl. I put the wget command on my website, dash q, dash big o, dash, wget, dash q, dash big o, dash, file path to bash. So we rewrote sources.list. Next, I do an apt update. Should pull from my mirror. And there it goes. 65 packages can be upgraded. So now if I run an upgrade, we'll let that run in the background and take a look at what the cache sees. So cache here is seeing a bunch of file accesses and they're all showing up as misses because nothing's actually looked at the cache before. So the cache is currently empty. So to fix that, let's create another system just to see what happens the second time. So I made a new system just to see. We'll once again run the rewrite script and we'll run upgrade and let's see if this time the cache hits it. Oh yeah, we're doing a lot of caches and they all got hit by the cache. So the cache took care of the second set of upgrades almost entirely. And that's basically exactly what I was hoping for. Every time my systems do updates, it won't be that much data, but because there are so many systems, only the first one will actually download the file from the internet. All the rest of them will pull them from cache. Except for the in-release file, we pull that one every time, but it's not that big of a file. So anyway, if you want to set this up for yourself, blog post down below should have a complete copy of all of these instructions and all of the scripts that I used. If you have any questions, you can check the blog post as well. Make sure I set everything right in the video because I'll include any fixes down in the blog post below. If you want to chat with me about Linux, Proxmox, Debian, all that kind of good stuff, I have a Discord server linked down below for that. If you want to give me any tips, I have a Ko-fi link down below for that. It's kind of like Patreon, but it's a one-time thing instead of monthly because I don't want to have any recurring subscriptions. But uh, yeah, so I'll see you guys on the next adventure.